It's the logo for the Wu Tang band. I think you mean the Wu Tang clan. Right. Big fan. <laughs> what were you covering up? My kids' names. Ah. Oh. The artist did a beautiful job. It was very tasteful. Just as he was finishing up, I thought for the rest of my life, people would come up to me and they would say, oh, what a nice tattoo. Who are Aaron and Jeremy? And I would say, they're my children. <laughs> I'm Nora Kirst. Ask me about my poor departed children. That's pathetic. I think I'm going crazy. Mm -mm. You are not going crazy, Nora. How are you not going crazy after Evie? Evie died. And I got the barrier. I bought a trampoline. Ladies and gentlemen, we like to welcome to you all the way from the slum to Shaolin. What? Special uninvited guests came in through the back door. Flashlight. License and registration, please. I didn't go to see her. I was in St. Louis on business. You live in Kentucky. How'd you even know where to find her? Christine just wants to know if she should be worried. She came after me. She filed for custody because she made the single worst mistake of her life. She wanted to fight me. And did I fight back, Tom? No. Kevin adopted me when I was three. I grew up thinking he was my real dad. And when I was 10, he and my mom decided that I should know about my real father, my biological father. I spent the next 10 years of my life knocking on some asshole's fucking door. So I wish they wouldn't have told me because I was already where I belonged. Well, do you know what I wish? I wish you'd never left her from me. I didn't leave Lily for you, Nora. I left it for my dad. I didn't even know you existed. God. Which one do you want to pray? This one, please. Jesus. How big can I make it? Oh. 
fuck you with them till tomorrow. I tear it off every time. I just do it to feel. I don't want to die. This is the time to tell them about the tattoo, I guess, Nora. They're not okay. It's okay. It is. You don't need to explain again. Okay, look. I got a tattoo. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Have a baby. What? Yeah. I want to have a baby with you. Too. Bullshit! No, you're not. Let's not fuck that up, okay? But this situation is already fucked. I need to get that. Oh my god! <sighs> yes. gonna do it. Yes, I can do that. Excellent. Who's that? Work. I need to go to Australia. Can I come with you? Yeah. So the biggest way of telling kangaroos from wallabies, in my opinion, is if you think of kangaroos like sheep and wallabies like goats. Kangaroos are really a grazing animal in big wide open plains and eating those long stalky grasses. Whereas wallabies on the other hand, are sort of like a goat. They go around and they're picking and browsing off bits and pieces. So different ecological niches for different parts of Australia. Whether they're kangaroos or wallabies, the main thing is these guys are both iconic Australians. But with the seventh anniversary of like the October deer. 15, fast approaching, we may see some hellfire moving up from the south. And off the Gold Coast, a high pressure system of locusts and perhaps blood what? boiling up. Did you hear that? I love how they're making Australia like 10 times more Australia than this. <laughs> Good evening. Hey, sweetheart. Ladies. May I ask why you're blocking my driveway? Who the hell? Are you chief of police? Indeed I am. Is your name Kevin? Indeed it is. And he looked at them and raised his hand, but they did not wave in response. And so he clutched the stone to his chest and jumped into the water. Ah, that's the book of Kevin. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I know who you are. Well, I don't know who you are. 
My name is Grace Playford, and I need your help. I can explain everything. No, no, no. I don't want you to explain fucking anything. I want you to get the fuck off my property. And <laughs> Jesus, Florence! He wasn't coming. Oh, I like Florence! As long as that's not poison, but, you know, sleepy juice. Fuck! Dabbling! It's all right. You're amongst friends. We know who you are. Wrong Kevin! There you go. Wrong Kevin! I don't know why you're acting this way. But if I have to prove I know, then so be it. Maybe it's not him. It's him. Let me go, you fucking cunt! I'll see you in two minutes. Grace, what if it's not him? It's him. before you went straight to drowning him, love. Wake up. My God, it was like the dunking of witches. How many times have they done that, I wonder? How many dead Kevins are there in the world floating about? Hey! What are you ladies up to? fantastic that was a really really good episode very different different pace but I really liked it and I felt like it got stronger as it went on as well and it answered a whole bunch of my questions so Lily is back with Christine her mother who clearly is doing way better than she was when we last saw her, she looked really together. She's got another child. All good. But it's devastating, Nora. And Nora's clearly in a lot of pain. And very similar to season two and season one, you know, at her worst, where she's cold, she's passive aggressive. There is a land called Passive Aggressiva, and you are their queen. I am. You know, she says things like she's joking, but it's brittle her and kevin are just like it's like they're rehearsing lines for a play or something it's really very well done that barely beneath the surface tension that's going on between the two of them because they're both pretending again they're both pretending to be okay when they're not okay they're pretending to be happy when they're not happy and neither of them is talking about it. And when one does, the other one just kind of goes, it's okay. Like, you know, the way Nora was with Kevin then was similar to how she was with the handcuffs, you know, put, handcuffing him to the bed. And she's like, it's okay. The widow of Jesus Pillar Man is trying to, you know, create her 
husband, you know, give him the legacy he deserved for all of his, you know, for, for all of the effort that he put in to placate the gods with his pillar standing suffering, which is very akin to Matt. Matt's all over it like white on rice. He's like, you know, for God's sake, Nora, just give someone a break. You know, just give him a break. Of course, Nora does not. Nora goes off to meet Mark Lynn Baker, actual Mark Lynn Baker, to say, you know, to find out what he's talking about, about bring your kids back, or do you want to see your kids again? And basically, long and the short of it, a whole bunch of people have been shot with a ray gun, and it sent them off. That's That's the story. We've seen the videos of seemingly hundreds of people saying they're doing it and, and off they pop. And Nora freaks out. She decides she's going to go dig up Lily and that whole situation plays out. She couldn't get a touch screen to work for love nor money. Everything she interacted with technically went wrong. I don't know what that's about. Is it because she's a lens and it's her... No. She comes back, she finds... You know, first of all, there was that horrible conversation with Tom, which was, like, not healing. That was not a healing conversation. You know, I totally get where both of them were in that conversation, but it was just, like, this is one person's baggage having a conversation with someone else's baggage. Neither of you were going to move forward in this conversation, and they didn't. And Nora gets home and finds Kevin with with the bag over his head. And his response to being caught in that moment is to say, let's have a baby. They're not having a baby. And something clicks in her and she's like, fuck this shit, I'm off to Melbourne. Yeah, I'll go, I'm going to go and get shot by Ray Gunn in Melbourne. But then Kevin wants to tag along. And then we're in Australia. We're off in Australia. Oh, no. And i got to say, Nora's little freaking walk of shame where she puts the, basically like the autopsy photograph of um, whatever the hell Jesus Pillar Man is called, right in front of his widow and everyone else. And you just thought, Nora, why have you got to do it? It is classic where it's like when you're in that amount of pain, you almost want to put... Up. She doesn't want them to have the comfort she's denying herself. I get that. I totally get the psychology of it. But my God, is it frustrating to watch? It is so frustrating to watch. Because you kind of want to go... Like, who are you to do that? Just let them have their little dreams. Like, what, what does it hurt you for them to have you know have that so that's where I was at that point but bear with me because the Australia stuff so we've got the Kevin chief of police also called Kevin who's kind of replicating Kevin's episode nine of season one you know with the hitting you know he put down the he put down a kangaroo Kevin put down a deer then the four horsewomen of the apocalypse show up at his house later that night and they're like, are you the chief? Is your name Kevin? He's like, yeah, you know, what do you fucking want? Florence shoots him with a tranquilizer, and then they dunk him like a witch. Again. <laughs> And that's kind of what they did with this poor chief, Kevin, who is not Kevin Garvey. He's not written about in the book of Kevin, you know, when she was talking about, and so he walketh with his, you know, he jumped into the river with a cinder block in biblical verse. God. So he's dead or he's just woke up in a hotel to battle, to battle with somebody. But now... Our Kevin is headed to Australia, but furthermore, when the four women of the four horsewomen of the apocalypse turn round from the river where they've been dunk, dunking 
Chief Kevin? Chief Kevin's our actual dad, who we know is in Australia. It's like, hey, women, like, girls, what are you up to? So the horsewoman, former Chief Garvey, former Chief Garvey, who's Kevin, Norder, oh, there's going to be a collision. There is going to be a collision. And I want to see it. I really want to see it. That was a fantastic episode. Yay to season three. I've just realised I've been so blown away I didn't even mention. We also saw Erica. Now we know. So she's like, she's somewhere. She could have been in St. Louis, Kentucky, or on the outskirts of, like, I have no idea where she was. But she's not with the main group in Miracle. She's away. And she looked fantastic. She looked really good, like aware she was able to like support Nora with what Nora was going through and she was kind but she was also firm and making sure that she got the truth from Nora and then she took her on the trampoline. I'm now at peace. Thank you The Leftovers for giving me a solid Erica doing her thing again, right and wrongs, taking names brilliant i really enjoyed this and i can't wait for episode three and um, it's gonna be the oh, it's gonna be over before i know it so i'm just trying to focus on all the things that i'm enjoying super duper on we go until the next time bye bye